Previews are something that I don't even do for laptops, but since I'm so excited to talk about the Dell Xperia 13 after using it for one day, I just couldn't wait any longer. And just to clear one thing up, this is an extended preview, not the review. The difference here is that I start to ramble a little bit more, I am a little bit more nitpicky and I nag about stuff and talk about details that I won't maybe even mention in the review. So if you want all of the information, you should watch both. If you want to know the definite conclusive part, of course the review will be done. But if you want to know some minor maybe details that could be important after all, this is the video to watch. And I actually want to get to one thing first, because I should have already gotten this device like two weeks ago, but Dell wanted to send me the QHD Plus version. And after listening, which is actually nice to reviewers, they decided to go for the Full HD version. Why? That was the exact right decision and why I applaud them for that, you will see later on. But first of all, let's get into the design. As you can see, it looks a lot like the Dell XPS 13, but this is the convertible version. As you can see, also super nice compact amazing high quality build really absolutely amazingly done the one thing that i'm not the biggest fan of is this quite sharp edge but that's pretty much already it. if you quickly check the ports here we have usb type c this is thunderbolt 3 headphone jack battery status here we have one of the two speakers the second one being here then we have the power button as a micro SD card slot, I would have really wished for an SD card slot here. And once again, Thunderbolt here once again, but unfortunately no volume rock. Why that is a little bit unfortunate, I will tell you in just a second. Now let's try to open this up and no, with one hand you can't. There is nothing to really hold on to. So you kind of already need two hands and the hinge is quite stiff, which is actually good though, because it is a very secure hinge and even if you use it as a tablet it won't really change a lot much so even though it's not quite easy to open i definitely like that it is such a stiff and nice hinge so really great to done and as you can see here this is what i have been talking about pretty much no bezels at all of course therefore with the compromise of the camera being down there but I can live with that if I see this nice compact design really well done. Now about the keyboard, I still have to say I expected more because on the preview that I had in Munich a few weeks ago, I actually noticed that we have more travel than we had on the first versions of the Dell XPS 13. And I have to say one thing, you can type on it really well and fast, but to me, the feedback is still lacking and it feels a little bit dead to me because the bottoming out is still quite hard. There is not really any flex though. And it is a kind of high quality keyboard with backlight and so on. Maybe not the best design or the layout because I would have really liked to have not to seen this page up and down because it's in the way when I just want to use the cursor. So they could have just get rid of that. And what I would have wished to have seen is actually a dedicated brightness control, not this that you have to use with the function keys, but ones that you can actually use just up there. and. I would have definitely not needed the media controls, but it would have been just more convenient to use the brightness with just one button, but you have still a volume and of course the backlight. But like I said, you can type on it really well. It is a good keyboard, but the typing experience was just not really a pleasurable, not a satisfying one because the keyboard after all feels kind of dead, even though it is really nice and quiet. Trackpad, the only thing that I want to hear complain about is falling. Can you hear this? This feels like there would be a little bit of a gap in between. And if I just tap on it or if I want to scroll, I always feel this gap. Not Actually not always because sometimes I do and sometimes I don't for some reason. I don't know why. And that's why it feels like the gap is sometimes a little bit there depending on how the device is maybe warmed up or so because after all plastic and or carbon changes with temperature. But still, texture is kind of okay. It's almost a little bit too small, not the great one either, but it gets the job done, it's okay. But we have a touch screen and I wanna get into that. And this is the part when I maybe want to get a little bit more into it and I will have to kind of have this off angle because my camera doesn't like bigger screens, for example. As you can see here, I get this odd little more ray effect, which is off angle a little better. Now, what do I wanna say about the sharpness? And I wanna just talk about this. This is a 1080p IPS display and this is exactly the right decision because since it is touched with Gorilla Glass, as you can see, it is glossy, but it actually doesn't feel like it at all because when I look at it straight forward, I almost don't see any glare and it's not disturbing at all. So I think this is the perfect compromise, delivering a glossy display where we have all the great contrast in the colors and the nice sharp appearance, but we don't have the scaling issues and the issues that you would have with the QHD Plus display, this is also super nice, but I definitely prefer 1080p when it comes to scaling, but I never liked the matte display, the matte 1080p 
of the Dell XPS 13 and this is the sweet spot. I would have really wished to have this display in the Dell XPS 13 but unfortunately that is not the case because this is a high quality display. I will get into that a little bit more in the review since I just bought a, colorim a colorimeter that I can use it to calibrate and actually check the qualities of this display and I will get into that then in the full review. About the sound, I'm super happy. Why? You will see. Because if we get the volume up... Yes, yes, and again, yes. This is the first XPS or the first Dell in ages or if not ever that I'm super pleased with the sound because we have the two speakers on the sides which therefore is great because it won't get blocked being down facing but it is super loud, pretty much doesn't distort which is something that Dell usually has always issues with and it sounds nice, full and rich and this makes me so happy. You can't almost believe how happy this makes me because this is so great and I can't applaud them anymore for that. This is just exactly the right decision and they did really change a few things that I had it in the past but the speaker now definitely is not it and it is one of the actual best speakers even though it's quite a small device that I've ever used on a laptop so absolutely great in terms of the performance I did check the SSD speeds but I will let you unclear here until the review but as you can see here browsing in the scroller absolutely nice and this is also one of the benefits of the 1080p display because we are using the i7 that we can quickly actually check here the i7 y or 7y75 so this is the i7 kind of core y version or older core m and this one would in my opinion already struggle a little bit with things like, for example, the QHD Plus display. And of course, the battery life would suffer. So I'm happy that they made this decision because this device, after using it for one day, should be perfectly satisfied for all daily tasks like browsing, number crunching and all that. Of course, not so much for gaming or like heavy video editing, but that's not what this device is intended for since it, after all, has these nice little features with the hinge and so on, which is definitely nice. Unfortunately, I did not get the stylus. I maybe will get it with a little bit luck during the review period, but I won't really think too much about it because I've told this Dell, if you release a device that you announce with stylus support, you should make sure that every reviewer gets that stylus. And that's why I hope I will get one, but performance, absolutely no concerns. Now, hit the noise. I'm super happy about that because it doesn't make any noise. It's fanless. It's not a Core i5 or not a Core i7 dual core. But the Y performs absolutely top, doesn't really get warm so far from what I've noticed and there is just no noise at all. Of course, it will, if it will throttle or if it will get hot and so on, I will check during my full review. But just being silent and in normal daily use being more than powerful enough with silent behavior is what I wanted to see. Battery life, I can't really judge it that far yet because I've used it for about one cycle. But this cycle already tells me a lot. What? 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 And that is the following fact. I got about almost, like, let's say seven, let's say six, six and a half hours of screen on time. But consider one thing. This was with the whole setup process. This was with a firmware update and with a lot of other stuff. And I'm not even sure if the device was fully charged. So already this is great potential. Now in terms of software, the only thing that I want to mention here, and this is actually my big complaint that was already fixed because out of the box it once again came with dbc dynamic backlight control what does it mean this means if you ha are in a uh, if you have on the screen something a lot darker like in a video or if you have a dark page the screen will dim and if you get on a white page again it will brighten up but usually what happened on dell xps devices in general or on dell devices or on many other devices actually in general was a smooth transition but an annoying one i hate this feature it shouldn't even ever have existed but on this version it was actually like someone would push the button every time to make it like in steps the great in terms of brightness or raising brightness this was super annoying i contacted the dell and 
gladly on exactly the day I got the device. So yesterday the fix actually came. I used it. Of course, this comes with the compromise of maybe less battery life, which it says because it won't dynamically optimize and dim the display. But I'm so happy about that because no, no display change at all. No brightness fix because of change because I hate, I, I hate if someone else that's not me changes the brightness and a laptop definitely doesn't know what to do. So what is my final conclusion for the preview, not for the review. I really like it a lot. Design is amazing, the display is fully satisfying, the sound is great, performance is more than I would need. The battery life seems quite nice, quite promising so far. No noise, moderate heat, software issues got fixed already. The typing experience in a trackpad isn't my favorite thing. I think I would get away with typing and I wouldn't really use the touchpad a lot, uh, the trackpad a lot. I would use either touch or a mouse pad. The only other downside that is still left is the price because it starts at least here in Germany at around 1400 euros. And I think this version is, I'm quite sure, at least 1800, if not even 2000. I will have to check that because I did not find this particular configuration yet. But this is this device this is the device at least so far it looks like that i wanted for like the last three or four years already now i have it and i really want it but i just can't justify getting it yet because i still have even though a four year old macbook pro that gets its job done and i would lose too much money on it and this is just too expensive i want one so if dell maybe forgets i have one <laughs> I really want this one so far, but who knows? Maybe after a one week or a second week, my opinion will change. Highly doubt it though, because this seems to tick all the boxes and the one that it doesn't tick aren't that crucial and got improved so much that I'm actually fine with it. So that's why I was so excited about it and I wanted to share my experience with you. I know there are already a lot of reviews out there, but I think with my usual style, I will just deliver maybe a little bit more information. So it's definitely worth waiting for this review, especially if I calibrate the display, get all measurements done and so on. So maybe look out for that if you want to. Subscribe to the channel. And if you like this, thumbs up. And leave me any comments on there below if you want to maybe see something specific. Otherwise, I'd say nice day. Bye.